A Family Affair, a Netflix original. Today, we're diving into the shocking revelations from Netflix's new documentary, The Menendez Brothers. This isn't just another true crime story. It's a descent into the heart of a family torn apart by an unspeakable act. Eric and Lyle Menendez, who were convicted of murdering their parents, are speaking out for the first time in 35 years. They claim their motives were fueled by fear, twisted by years of alleged abuse at the hands of the people who were supposed to protect them. In the aftermath of the murders, the world watched as Eric and Lyle Menendez, young men barely out of their teens, spent their parents' fortune with reckless abandon. They bought cars, they bought clothes, they bought their way into a life of fleeting pleasure, indulging in every woman desire without a second thought. But behind this facade of indifference, Eric harbored a chilling secret. He couldn't believe they weren't suspects. The weight of their actions bore heavily on him. It was almost as if he expected the police to see through the charade, to see the guilt etched onto their souls. Every glance over his shoulder was filled with paranoia. The police, however, were blinded by the family's wealth, by the illusion of a perfect life. They were deceived by the outward appearances. They saw two grieving sons, not cold-blooded killers. The brothers played their roles convincingly, masking their true emotions. The evidence, or lack thereof, seemed to support this narrative. The case files were thin, and the leads were few. The murder weapon, a shotgun, was never found. It was as if it had vanished into thin air. There were no witnesses to the crime itself. The night was silent, and the neighborhood remained undisturbed. Eric and Lyle, in their minds, had crafted the perfect alibi. They believed their story was airtight. Their arrogance, fueled by their naivete, was almost palpable. They underestimated the persistence of the investigators. They moved through the motions of grief, all the while believing they had outsmarted the system. Their confidence grew with each passing day, but the truth, as it always does, had a way of revealing itself. The facade began to crack, and the real story started to emerge. The world saw their spending spree as a sign of their guilt, a grotesque display of indifference to the horrific crime they had committed. The public was outraged, unable to comprehend how they could indulge in such luxury. But for Eric and Lyle, it was a desperate attempt to outrun the truth to silence the screams that echoed in the cavernous halls of their minds. They were haunted by their actions, trying to find solace in material possessions. Every extravagant purchase, every fleeting moment of pleasure, was a bandage ripped off too soon, a reminder of the gaping wound they carried within. The more they spent, the more they tried to cover up their pain. The money, once a symbol of their parents' success, became a lifeline, a way to keep their heads above the suffocating waters of guilt and despair. They were drowning in their own remorse, seeking refuge in opulence. They spent as if there were no tomorrow, because, in their minds, there wasn't. Their future seemed bleak, overshadowed by their past actions. The life they had known, the life they had so brutally taken, was gone. They were left with memories that tormented them day and night. They were adrift in a sea of grief, clinging to anything that could keep them afloat. Their lavish lifestyle was a desperate attempt to find stability. Their spending wasn't an act of defiance, but a desperate cry for help, a way of saying, look at us, we're hurting, we're lost. They wanted the world to see their suffering, to understand their turmoil. But the world wasn't ready to listen, not yet. 
The public's anger overshadowed any empathy they might have had. They were too blinded by the horror of their crime, by the cold, hard facts that painted them as monsters. The narrative was set and the brothers were cast as villains in a tragic story. Chapter 3 A made-for-TV spectacular The flashing lights of the paparazzi cameras were blinding. A relentless barrage of light that seemed to pierce through the very soul. The cacophony of reporters' questions was deafening. A chaotic symphony of voices clamouring for a soundbite. A headline. For Lyle Menendez, the moment of his arrest wasn't just a fall from grace. It was a public spectacle. A moment meticulously captured and broadcast to millions. It was a carefully orchestrated performance. A media circus designed to feed the insatiable hunger of the 24-hour news cycle. The media frenzy was relentless, each outlet vying for the most sensational angle, the most dramatic shot. He felt like a puppet, his strings being pulled by unseen forces, his every move scrutinised, dissected and analysed. His life had become a spectacle, a tragic play where he was the unwilling star, his every action broadcast for the world to see. The charges against him, the accusations of murder, seemed surreal, a distant echo in the whirlwind of chaos that had become his life. He maintained his innocence, his voice a whisper lost in the roar of the crowd, a plea drowned out by the noise. But the court of public opinion had already reached its verdict. He was guilty, not just of murder, but of being young, wealthy, and seemingly unremorseful. The media frenzy surrounding his arrest only solidified his belief that he was trapped in a macabre reality show, a modern-day tragedy playing out on a global stage. He was no longer Lyle Menendez, the grieving son. He was a character, a villain, stripped of his humanity and reduced to a headline. The world watched, transfixed, as his life unraveled before their eyes. A spectacle of human drama and tragedy. He was no longer just a man. He was a symbol, a cautionary tale, a figure to be dissected and discussed. In the end, he was reduced to a mere headline, a name synonymous with scandal and infamy forever etched in the annals of media history. Chapter 4 The O.J. Effect The acquittal of O.J. Simpson sent shockwaves through the nation, but for Eric and Lyle Menendez, it was more than just a news story. It was a beacon of hope, a glimmer of light in the darkness of their impending trial. If Simpson, a man facing overwhelming evidence could walk free, then perhaps they too had a chance. The timing couldn't have been more profound. Their first trial had ended in a hung jury, the public deeply divided on their guilt. The spectre of reasonable doubt loomed large, fueled by their claims of abuse and the seemingly insurmountable task of proving their motives. Simpson's acquittal, they believed, had shifted the landscape had awakened a sense of scepticism towards the prosecution's case. The public, once hungry for their blood, now seemed willing to listen, to consider the possibility that there was more to the story than met the eye. Chapter 5 A Lifetime of Regret Years of incarceration had done little to quell the storm that raged within Eric Menendez. The guilt, once a whisper, now roared in his ears, a constant reminder of the irreversible act that had shattered his family and condemned him to a life behind bars. He carried the weight of his actions like a physical burden, his every breath a testament to his sin. He blamed himself, not just for the murders, but for the aftermath, for the pain he had inflicted on his brother, for the life they had both lost, the memories, once a source of comfort, now haunted his waking hours. 
each image a fresh wound on his soul. He saw his parents' faces, frozen in time, their eyes reflecting the terror of their final moments. 